Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus. So if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, Suddenly, a light from the heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was, disciple, there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. 
At this moment, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done in your saints and in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who would invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go for he is an instrument who I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. We may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I feel secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. A reading from Revelation to John. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory, power and wealth no, and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus showed himself again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. 
and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. <laughs> they said to him, we will go too. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. And when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Where's the rest of it? I <laughs> Well, there was so much gospel there, I figured we didn't really need a lot of sermon, but <laughs> there we go. I always get, uh, I don't know whether it's praised or uh, grumped at for preaching short sermons, um, but here we go. We'll see if, how, how this works. Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. And they went out and got in the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Don't you just love the reaction of the disciples to the resurrection? First of all, this is a pretty motley crew. You got Thomas the doubter, Peter the denier, Nathaniel, the two Zebedee boys, and, quote, two others. 
So they're gathered at McDonald's a few days before the resurrection, after the resurrection, <laughs> drinking coffee, and Peter pipes up, hey, let's go fishing. Everybody thinks that's a great idea. Only they are the world's worst fishermen, as we know, and once again, they caught nothing. There was more beer cans in that than fish in the bottom of that boat. <laughs> And that's about the time that the risen Christ shows up. <laughs> Peter quickly puts on some clothes and jumps into the sea. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is who God has to work with to begin the great Christian birth. <laughs> I feel better already. I don't know who wrote this story. <laughs> but what is more interesting, really, is the conversation that, that follows, that takes place between Peter and Jesus around that charcoal fire as the fish, which Jesus provided, were roasting. It's reminiscent of that charcoal fire where Peter was warming himself while Jesus was being hauled off to face Pilate's questioning, if you remember. Around that fire, Peter swore he did not even know Jesus. Three times he denied being a disciple. This time, at Jesus' questioning about his commitment, Peter tries to redeem himself. Three times Jesus asked Peter if he loved him, and each time Peter declared himself, yes, indeed. However, there's a trick in the way that St. John has written this story. There are several words in Greek that are translated as love. Jesus uses the word agape. Peter responds with the word filio. They're very different things. Agape refers to that deep self-sacrificing love of a parent for a child. Philly, Philio, like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, is more a collegial relationship. Yeah, we're best buds, you might say. Jesus is asking for something a little bit more, for total commitment. Peter is stuck at being a fraternity brother. Finally, in his last asking, Jesus also uses the word filio. It's almost as if he's saying, okay, if that's the best you can do, I'll take it. And I can almost see Peter slapping Jesus on the back and offering him a plate of fish. Of course, the story doesn't end there. And by the end of his life, Peter was more than ready to accept crucifixion for the sake of his faith and for the God he had come to know and understand. But it's also comforting to know that God will meet us where we are. Peter's simplistic reaction to the early events following the resurrection were totally in line with who he was, a lifelong fisherman from the backwaters of Galilee. He was a good-hearted man who loved his friends, Filio, and it made him a great leader in the early days of the Christian movement. He held together a motley crew of men and women who were scared to death of what their future might be. But in the end of those disciples, all but St. John are said to have grown in faith and commitment to accept a violent death for the sake of the gospel that they came to understand. This might be helpful to those of us who feel that our faith isn't nearly as deep or as strong as we might wish. Maybe there are times when we're going to find ourselves going off fishing when we might be doing something more productive for the world. But God seems to understand that not many of us are ready to commit every waking hour to our faith, our church, our communities. 
most of us begin with a simpler agenda. And if we're lucky, we may have the kind of welcoming heart that Peter had, filio. It's a good place to begin the journey to that complete and powerful agape faith that helped transform not just a gang of fishing buddies, but a whole world. It took at least three encounters with the risen Christ, but Peter finally got the point where he was ready to do whatever it took to accept Jesus' call, call to follow me. These stories of the saints are intended to remind us of how a handful of ordinary people wound up doing extraordinary things because they had encountered God in ways that totally filled their lives. They weren't perfect. St. Peter was not even close. But they grew into a life of faith that made sense to them. And that's what each of us are called to do. God knows our weaknesses, our lack of faith, our often petty concerns. But it doesn't deter God from asking us to grow our faith as we live our daily lives. Some of the most frivolous moments can become moments of great insight if we're on the lookout for the risen Christ. St. Peter gives us hope that we too can be great disciples. It's always worth remembering that God took a ragtag bunch of women and men and made them into one of the most powerful, most committed fellowships that the world has ever known. As God received the gifts St. Peter had to offer, may God also take whatever gifts we may have and use them in service for the people and for the world that God loves so much. Amen. Amen. What are we doing next? Let's stand together now and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Brothers and sisters, give thanks to the one who clothes us with joy. The Lord is our helper and restorer. Therefore, let us pray, hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon us. O God, you have chosen your church to bring your name before all nations. Give us hearts to feed your lambs and tend your sheep. Give us hearts to follow Jesus. 
Hear, O Lord. Lord Christ, we look for the day when all will live together in peace, when every voice will together sing this hymn to the one seated on the throne, and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Hear, O Lord. Creator of the deep, protect and preserve our lakes, rivers, and oceans, and all creatures who live therein. May we be good stewards of the gift of water. Hear, O Lord. Ancient of days, we pray for the senior members of our community. Bless with patience and confidence those who rely on others for support, care, and transportation. Bless their caretakers with strength. Hear, O Lord. O oh Lord, restore to health those who cry out to you, especially Amelia, Andrea, Art, Arthur, Father Brent, Christina, Mary Boyd, Harry and Marie Bissell, Bill Casale, Diane Dumond, Edward Dufresne, Jiffy Full, Brinley Hall, <clears throat> Grace High, Bethany Hill, Jill, Justin, Kayla, Kira and John Klinger, Keegan, Joanne Creston, Michelle Liberty, Lisa Look, Fred Marston, Sophia Partridge, Roland, Ronan, Rhea, Donnie Smith, Peter Smith, Marshall Smith, Peggy Smith, Fred Stein, Carolyn Taylor, Judy Thomas, Holly Whalen, and Persis Williams. Lift up the lowly, turn wailing into joyful dancing. Hear, O Lord. Living God, you restore the life of those in the grave. May we and all the dead experience resurrection and life everlasting. Hear, O Lord. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Abby Martin, Elaine McLean, Jim Cacciano, and Sarah Everdell. Hear, O Lord. We pray for those who serve in the armed services, especially Abigail, Andy Dittmer, Kyle Carino Ming, and Kevin West. Hear, O Lord. You are invited to add any additional intercessions at this time, either silently or aloud. I pray for the people of Ukraine. Hear, O oh Lord. Preserve us all, O oh Lord, and take us home to your heart, so that all our lives may be woven together in prayer and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <coughs>
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Francis and St. Clare and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Um, Steve, thank you so much for being here. We're just always pleased to have you. And thank you. Um, I also see some summer family members back, and we're just so happy to have you back. I also want to welcome Pearl Madsen. <laughs> it's so nice to have you. We are just old friends. In fact, uh, Pearl was the friend I called when in the middle of the night when, when I was going into labor with my last child <laughs> and she came and babysat three little boys while their sister was being born. Welcome. Um, I, I understand that the announcements were not heard by everybody last week, so I just wanted to reiterate our thanks to Regina Christensen and um, there was a little glitch in communication. It was nobody's fault, but uh, Donna Downs didn't appear last week. And Regina just changed her clothes and came right up here and gave us a beautiful uh, homily. So thanks to her. Um, some good news. May 8th, a week from today, is Mother's Day. And it's also our kickoff for the Sunday School program. We will also, um, Sarah has been kind enough to uh, offer to host um, the rejuvenation of our coffee hour also. So um, that will happen next week. And if you want to lend a hand, see Sarah. Um, we are asking that all the participants in the Sunday School program be masked, adults and children. and. Um, and also people who are preparing food, just to err on the side of caution. So, um, and, and people have been so good about engaging with the children, and I um, am sure that's gonna continue, but let's make a big deal out of them next week. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for coffee hour, and it doesn't need to be elaborate. The, um, Let's see, I, I also wanted to let you know that the vestry has, has uh, voted not to have an eight o'clock service this year. We are just spread so thin with resources that um, we felt the more important thing was to try to renew the services to Parker Ridge and, um, and just have a 10 o'clock service every Sunday for this summer. So I'm sorry for those of you who, who prefer to go to that one, um, but we just can't do it this year. So what else? Encouraging people to get boosted. And um, I wanted to also let you know that Edward Dufresne is in need of some driving assistance. So he would like to hire somebody to be a driver for him. So if you have any, any inkling about somebody who could do that, please let me know. Thank you. Our processional hymn is in 535.
us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.